Hi guys, welcome to the Reading Stack. I'm Hunter, and today we're going to be covering a wonderful book. It is Once an Eagle by Anton Meyer. It's a fantastic read. It's a big read at uh, about 1,291 pages. It's just an epic tale. It is the story of a soldier. It is a, a fiction story that um, incorporates a lot of historical fiction. And boy, I've never read anything like it. If you don't know, this is a book that is required reading for West Point cadets, and I believe uh, cadets that are going into the Marine Corps as officers. Um, just a very influential book on leadership and uh, maybe the, the leader and the warrior's heart. And the story uh, focuses in on one warrior, and uh, his name is Sam Damon, Samuel Damon. This epic story is, you know, the story of his life from being a youngster, a teenager, um, upward. And uh, it really focuses a lot on, you know, this fictional story, but it's woven through the real history of the 20th century from about like 1912-ish to uh, way in the, up into the 60s. It chronicles a lot of the wars that America has fought and also the interwar periods, those periods uh, antebellum, I guess you could say, in between uh, the fighting when the army and uh, the country changes a great deal. You go through the story with him, with his family, as well as, um, and, and it's very cinematic. I explained scenes of it to my friends and they're like, whoa, that sounds like a good movie. And uh, that's, that's just how well written and how uh, good the events and the the suspense, the drama, action, and uh, Sam Damon, it's he, he, the chronicle of his life going through the army um, from enlisted to an, being an officer, and he has a main adversary, a main competitor, um, who's, as you read, not like the typical villain uh, you read of, but this guy's a, uh, like a mirror opposite of him, who is a career officer, never had been enlisted, really. Sam came from a humble place, as it shows in the beginning, whereas his rival, Courtney Massengale, the, his adversary, he comes kind of from a posh background um, and just a very different circumstances. And so both of them, you see a leadership philosophy. You know, Massengale just continues to get promoted and achieve success, it never goes through any battles or anything, whereas Sam Damon's just... Uh, he, he can't escape the battle, basically. Man, it's an awesome epic read. And uh, it took me about a month to read, and I, I was really invested. Uh, and I've looked at other people's reading, how long it took them, and it took them about 20 to 30 days on average from what I've seen. W what's in the book? Well, let's go to page 595 for our first quote. It begins, How'd you like to come over to MacArthur's staff? The captain grinned. I doubt very much if I'm wanted on anybody's staff right about now. Not necessarily. I've talked to the general about you. If you were interested, I think I could arrange it. Of course, I don't have to tell you there must be no more affairs. No. Damon nodded and pursed his lips. Well, it's... I certainly appreciate it, Major. It's only that I'd have to say I fill my places with troops. And, you know, that just shows that... People throw opportunities at Sam Damon, but he never wants to really leave that place where he's interacting with the soldiers, you know. He doesn't ever want to be detached from what's going on. You know, if there's a war to be fought, he wants to be there and not be um, having his men suffer and him not be uh, not feel the effects of that his decisions so in what he does he has to feel the effect of his decisions whereas a lot of officers that may not be the case you know it may not be life or death it may be just the career uh, pressure for them and on a uh, page 440 it begins she would wake at night to see him hunched up under the dented gooseneck lamp his baseball cap tilted forward to shield his eyes studying French, or ballistics, or reading Gemini, or Clausewitz, or even Trevelyan, and Gibbon, and Thucydides. Darling, she would call softly, it's late, you'll ruin your eyes. Just a few minutes more. He read like a starving man in a granary, and he retained what he read. He said he had to catch up, 
he'd missed out on so much that the pointers and the older men already knew. There were so many fields he had to master, and always studying late or sitting calmly, attentive during the courtesy calls, or singing at the piano with the others at the post hops after the rank had left, there was that persistent little current of preoccupation. Like voltage moving along a cable, a sense of preparation, of holding himself in readiness for a day of sudden exigency and trial. So you see him that he just has such a hunger and a humility to prepare and to make himself better that he never really acts like, uh, hey, I've arrived and uh, I don't need this anymore. But he's always preparing, always, you know, really uh, exercising that leadership to study, to become stronger. And that was during the interwar years when you're more tempted maybe not to take things seriously, but he was serious about getting better and uh, fulfilling his calling. Then page 1288, and this is near the end of course, so I'm going to, I may botch this quote a little bit not to uh, give you any spoilers or anything. The romantic spendthrift moral act is ultimately the practical one. The practical experience Expedient, cozy dog move is the one that comes to grief. Yes, remember that. If it comes to a choice between being a good soldier and a good human being, try to be a good human being. And I think that's another thing you see uh, with Sam Damon as a, as a leader of warriors is uh, he has humility. He uh, takes up for these guys that he really sacrifices himself, that he's more motivated out of like a love for these people than, you know, his ego and his pride, what he can do. He embodies that character of the kind of the humanitarian leader that, you know, checks in and says, hey, how are you doing today? You know really caring just going the extra mile should once an eagle this grand book that i can i can barely pale to describe all of it to to give you the weight of it um should it, this be on your bookshelf well i'd say yes if you're looking for a great story that just shows courage if you're looking for a story that has a, a measure of violence uh, the violence that would have been typical in World War One, in World War Two, any warfare, just the violence, uh, very visual, very shocking, you know, and very well written to place you there if it's in peace or in war. And also the relationships, you know, I think anyone would really like this because there's just so much a re relationships that are developing, good things that happen, there's hurts, betrayals. You know, just over a lifetime, relationships change, and uh, I really appreciated that character development. Also, history, you know, this is historical fiction. It's a lot of real people in the times, like uh, General Pershing, General Douglas MacArthur. There's a lot of mention of different people and that are real, and in a fictionalized version, but a very uh, realistic um embodiment in uh, in the story and i think if you're into warrior philosophy sam damon he's like that spartan warrior you know that he's just slugging it out with you know put the japanese in front of him put the uh, germans in world war one put uh, many others in front of him and he'll rise up to the occasion and also um if you do like a lot of like anti-war books like all quiet on the western front uh, and some of the good ones that came out of World War II. And I, I just think if you like any kind of the anti-war stories that are just very realistic and showing, not glorifying war, that I would say this is great. You know, this is um, Antoine Meyer, the story, you know, he fought on Guam. He was a combat veteran in the Marines, was enlisted. And maybe that's the reason why he was a little critical of a lot of the officers. He doesn't paint them all bad because, of course, the main character is the hero, but you definitely see a lot of poor officers and poor people in leadership in the story in the army, the upper echelon. And if you like a leadership story, I think if you weren't even interested in the military side, you could say, wow, that's a leader. And uh, it's just great fiction, man. It's, uh, it, it's so good. I didn't think I would be super into a book like this, but it just blew me away. It's a good reason why it's a New York Times bestseller. It's a long book. If you like something that's not over super quick, I'd say this is great. This It felt worthwhile to me in the fullest. It didn't feel like a waste of pages. And it's just so vast. So many pages, so many places. 
so many relationships and people just what a work this is uh, i just to make this i can't imagine what that w would be like and uh, reasons why you might wouldn't like it i was just scanning back through when i read it and there's just some language you know if you didn't want any foul language none of the f words or it's not super heavy on that if you just wanted a clean uh read going through there you probably wouldn't find it as typical of you know <laughs> soldiers and sailors yeah, the language factor may not be appropriate, like if you're a very young young kid. And also, if you wanted a shorter read, something to get through easier, I mean, you may want something that's a shorter length, and there's no abridged versions of Once an Eagle that I could find, uh, but there may be some out there to look into. And uh, maybe if you're an officer or you're not into the portrayal of the detached officers and the elitist and the uh, toxic leadership if you think that's a little bit fictitious then you may not get it into it but i think it's just a great book to learn from what's the lesson we could take away from once an eagle i think the biggest you see uh clearly is lead by example anybody can say hey go do this but to really exemplify practice what you preach man that's really where the rubber meets the road where you go and you enter the crucible and sam damon he just went through a lot really uh going into combat with your men away from your wife and uh there's just a lot of damage that happens in that uh, in war you know and he exposes himself to so much uh you know, when the enemy's unleashing the hate, so to speak. And uh, he led by example, and he, he suffered through that, and he gained victory. And it's very important to remind ourselves that, that we're all leaders. We all exert an amount of influence. We all have people that follow our example, and we follow other people's. But the main thing is, if we're going to lead, we need to lead by example. And uh, this book is just a great tale of that. Well, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day and a happy new year. Um, we'll have another book review soon on a different book, and uh, I just thank y'all for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you later on the reading stack. Bye.